wow, you came back again. I keep on thinking you're not going to be there. And every time I look out and see you, how's it going? This is The Music Files. My name's Roger. This is my buddy Dennis. And we're going to do a couple songs here. I think we're going to do three songs here that are associated with the great Ivory Joe Hunter. Why must I love a heartless one Who'll ever know the harm she's done version of that. I heard uh, the original version of it. It was the first take and they, the steel guitar on it is the most bouncy, you know, overtly honky-tonk steel guitar you ever heard. He recorded that in 1967. Now, a lot of people think that the Elvis comeback was 1968 when he did the Singer sewing machine special, you know, he wore the black leather suit and everything. No, it was 1967. He cut U.S. Mail, he cut Guitar Man, he cut Just Call Me Lonesome. Kind of reinvented himself as a little bit of a rockabilly country act, and it, it was some great music. Well, it was all great music. I mean, Elvis. All we were talking earlier. Yes. Elvis could sing the worst song and make you like it. Uh, you know, and you know, Teddy Bear is an awful song. It's just a terrible song. But when it has that beginning, and the way he sings it, you can't help but love it. You know, the guy was great. Uh, this is one of those forgotten. Uh, Elvis movie songs. Do you or don't you love me? It's such an easy question. Why can't I get an answer? Tell me, will you or won't you need me? It's such an easy question. Why can't I get an answer? And if I ask you, get real mad or you beat around the bush. I think it's time to make up your mind But baby, I don't want to push Do you or don't you love me? It's such an easy question 
Why can't I get an answer? Tell me. So if I ask you just get real mad or you beat around the bush. I think it's time to make up your mind But baby, I'm not gonna push Will you or won't you answer yes? It's such an easy question With such an easy answer It's such an easy question Why can't I get an answer? I think Elvis sold that one a little bit better than me, but hey, I'm just a local Fresno guy. Anyway, this next one, I learned it from uh, watching that movie, uh, or that TV series, True Blood. And at the end, it just kind of came on, and I heard the Nick Lowe version. And I remember it as a kid hearing the Johnny Bush version of it. And, you know, the Nick Lowe version is really good. It has that uh, 1960s Brooke Benton types of strings in it. You know, blues strings. You know, <laughs> you've heard that stuff, you know. And uh, it's, uh, it was really a cool version. And the way he sang it was very George Jones-esque, which is odd because, you know, Nick Lowe's a, a rock and roll guy. But, you know, music's music. If you can do one style, you can do them all, I think. Or at least you should try, because I like variety, you know? I listen to everything from Scott Walker, not the politician, the, the great godlike genius, the singer, and to, uh, you know, Harry Parch, to Elvis, to Marty Robbins, to Mr. Bungle. You know, I like everything. You know, music's good. So, but this is written by Ivory Joe Hunter, too. It is one creepy tune. The old alarm clock screams and yells It starts another day in hell And another night of knowing that you're gone In the mirror I can see Someone that used to be me And I turn blue in a cold gray light of dawn Oh, jukebox and a bar stool They get me through the night And I lean heavy on a bottle Till I no longer stand upright Then I wake up in my room Like a body in a tomb where four gray walls, they come on kind of strong I get in my car and drive For death, then I am alive Then I turn blue in a cold gray light of dawn A jukebox and a bar stool, well they get me on a bottle till I no longer stand upright Then I wake up in my room like a body in a tomb and the smell of death that lingers mighty strong I look in my car and drive more again than I am alive but I turn blue in a cold gray light of dawn. I turn blue in a cold gray light of dawn. We'll be right back from this important message from Organic Pastures. Pasture grazed, delicious, nutrient dense, 100% organic raw milk from Organic Pastures. Visit organicpastures.com or call 1 877 raw milk. 
I was an addict, an opiate addict. Be three years clean in October. I was renewed at the Fresno Rescue Mission. My mom, who does a lot of cooking, has been part of the rescue mission, has been willing to help teach people to make jams and jellies and other food. The Fresno Rescue Mission. And I believe that downtown Fresno needs a renewal as well. Tree of Life Cafe represents new, healthy growth in downtown Fresno. I've seen men and women go through rehab programs. They want to start a new life. And yet when they get out on the street, they find it very difficult to get a job. Nobody will give them a chance. That's what this cafe is designed to do. You will be like family to us. We will serve you our home-cooked food made with farm-fresh produce that comes from farmers right here in our valley. We, we love, love downtown Fresno. Fresno. Sunshine Natural Health in Tulare, California is your source for nature's best remedies. Call Sunshine Natural Health at 559-688-2063 and get healthy. If you're considering a reverse mortgage in the Central Valley or just want more information, contact Jerry Carmichael. She's experienced and more important, she's local. Call 559-903-6903. Call Brian Cossack today at 559-977-1976. Protecting you and those you love financially. Make an appointment today. At Miracle Realty, we've been providing premier professional residential sales and property management in residential and commercial property for years. We manage single-family homes, condominiums, apartment buildings, commercial buildings, office space, and much more. No matter what experience level you have in property management, Miracle Realty strives to make your experience as stress-free as possible. Serving Madeira and the surrounding areas, we use the latest technology and provide top-notch service. We're a trusted and reliable name in residential sales and property management with the experience to answer any questions or complications that might come up. Give us a call today or visit us online for more information. CentralValleyTalk.com You lucky people. You're so glad you hung around because I promised it and now I finally delivered. Cousin Mel is here. Let's hear it for Cousin Mel. Oh. Mel Mason. Can they see me right now? Oh, yeah. Hey, I got to say hello to my neighbors. Oh, do All it. All right. Uh, Krista, my neighbor next door to me, my other neighbor, Dolores, Sylvia, and Bella, that's her dog. I want to say hello to you. And uh, Jennifer, the one that called about the farmer's market, this is what you get. <laughs> Take it or leave it. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here, Roger. It's, I'm thrilled to be here with you and Dennis. Well, you know, I've heard of you for many years, <laughs> and we've met, what, we met what, 10 years ago, finally. Oh, more than that, Roger. Yeah, uh, but Mel and my dad were friends, and uh, they were, uh, what was your job title? Uh, product relocator? Product relocator, yeah. or, uh, uh, see, not delivery engineer, uh, product relocator, or uh, materials ma materials handling uh, engineer. Yeah. Yeah. Truck drivers. <laughs> so uh, they would meet up on Avenue 200. 200, to Larry. And were you a Teamster, too? We'd outsit each other. Yeah. Uh, I think they drank a lot of coffee and talked a lot about country music, from what I understand. And he told me about this son of his, which he was only what, probably under 10 at that time. Yeah. Great stories. I was a little boy in an Elvis suit. My mom would let this part of my hair grow in dippity do. That's styling gel. <laughs> Sideburns to the side of my head. And I was the only kid that uh, wore black leather clothes to school, black leather pants. <laughs> it's a good thing I was kind of huge or else I'd have got beat up a lot. Uh, but you know, that was uh, that was another time. So we play every Tuesday or every other Almost Tuesday. Almost every Tuesday. You're out there every week. Well, at, more or less at the with, cherry with auction. You or with somebody. Yeah, yeah, at the cherry auction. How long have you been out there? Oh, it's been over ten years. Um, I, I I didn't dream it would last this long, but it, and there's no stopping it now. Yeah. Oh, it's. And, uh, how many of you, by show of hands out there, have been to the Cherry Auction? Wow. Oh, my gosh. It's a great place. Now, I don't think there's anything else like it in the whole world, but especially in Fresno. It's like when you see those Anthony Bourdain shows or that Bizarre Foods. It's like one of those places, a cultural market mm -hmm. beyond compare. I mean, we have it right here in Fresno. 
And, you know, there's thousands of people out there every Tuesday and Saturday. 18,000 people can be there on a Saturday. Car shows. Yeah. Everything you could possibly want. Don't buy the Mr. Coffee from the one guy. But other than that, it's all been really good. <laughs> uh, the rugs. I bought the rugs from the guy. I'm real happy with them. You know, some great stuff out there. But uh, what's the best thing that goes out there is, I think, the music. Well, I think so. Because it's a chance to really do something different. You see, you have Victor Villarreal out there. You have Richie Blue out there. You have me out there. You've got Bobby Joe Neely out there sometimes. I've seen all kinds of stuff out there. I've seen uh, blues out there, rock. Steve Tracy came out and played with us one time. Remember that? Uh Uh-huh. So, you know, you just never know what's going to be out there. And uh, then Mel plays over at uh, the Farmer's Market in uh, River Park. Peter Mordek is out there a lot, too. Mm -hmm. We'll be there the second uh, Tuesday. Yeah, well, actually, I don't play out there a lot. This would be my first time in about 10 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been out there for a long time. But uh, you play a lot at the... Clovis Farmers, Clovis Market. Farmers Market every Saturday morning. I I play. Uh, I don't play my guitar. I do Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, uh, Tony Bennett, uh, and it's really a nice atmosphere. And, and and it's every Saturday morning from eight till about eleven. Wow. Every Saturday morning. Now I ask everyone who's on on the show because you know this is about Fresno music. You were born in Fresno. Born in Fresno. Okay. You went to which high school? Washington Union. Oh, my. Washington Union and Central, my yeah. high school, were kind of rivals when yeah. I was there. Were they still back then? Uh, yeah, somewhat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what was your first guitar? Well, the first guitar I bought uh, down on uh, Tulare by Coney Island um, at one of them Hawk stores. Oh, I remember that. The place was great. Yeah, yeah, and a person bought it for me. and uh, No, actually, I bought it myself. And I learned one thing. I'm not a guitarist, folks, not even near it, but this is what I learned. See? See? Well, I can't even do it anymore, but I did learn something. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> Never mind. Okay. We won't go there. Yeah. But I that was, I shelved it. That guitar I just got rid of. How old were you? Uh, before I went in the Navy, I was probably about 17. Oh, my. So you go to the Navy. Do you play any guitar during that time? Nope. You come home. Then what happens? How do you get well, started? Well, what happened was I saw the story of Hank Williams starring uh, George, George Hamilton, Hamilton yeah. in Boot Camp. You're yeah. cheating heart. I didn't know anything about Hank Williams. That movie just took me back. And one of my crewmen on my plane had some old 45s. He was playing uh, a lot of uh, Jim Reeves and, and Hank Williams. And I listened to that. I didn't really get lock, locked onto it, though. I was mm-hmm. still listening to pop music. Mm-hmm. I thought country music, you know, that's okay. But I like pop music. Not until I met my wife in 1969. We've been married 46 years. I asked her to go see Marty Robbins. Because to me, Marty Robbins was a pop singer. Yeah, he was. He did El Paso. Hey, that's, to me, that's a pop song. Yeah. So, And along with Marty Robbins was Merle Haggard. And I saw that show. I was at that show. And uh, I went and bought a guitar at Jimco with nylon strings Mm -hmm. for about $15. And I started to try to learn some chords. And that's where it all started. Jimco. Remember you had to have a a membership card? That was the first (laughs) membership card. Yeah. And remember they had uh, good guitars at Whitefront, too. Yeah, yeah. And uh, This this didn't have the crank on it. Okay. No, it, it, it didn't have the crank. Sometimes I wish it had came with a crank, but I had to learn how to play chords on it. <laughs> I remember I bought a guitar. I think it was either Jim Coe or uh, White Front, and the action was so high that I had to put a capo on the second fret to even play it. Yeah. And we were playing out at uh, the Sunnyside Squad. This is where I met Becky Carabello that day. Uh-huh. I mean, this is a long time ago. I'm like seven, eight years old. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, we had the capo on, and that was the only way you, could, you couldn't fret the guitar otherwise. Yeah. And some guy came up and uh, said, you'd be all right on that guitar if you didn't put that taco on it. <laughs> taco, not a capo. <laughs> I'll never forget that moment. And I was just like, you know, I'm still doing the same thing. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, yeah, those, it was an interesting time to be playing music, you know. It was, it was a lot more, uh, it was, I don't know, it was like guerrilla warfare sometimes. Yeah. Right there. The rocking horse, some of those places. Where did you start playing professionally? Well, actually, uh, I guess when you start getting paid, I guess we become a professional. I, I don't know when that point comes. But what happened was I was 
playing my guitar in my garage along with my neighbor who played the steel guitar. The Hawaiian steel uh -huh. with three sets of strings. No uh -huh. pedals. Yeah. And we were doing Sleepwalk. Okay. And it was in D-flat. And I was just having a terrible time making that D-flat. Oh, going. Yeah. And a neighbor, <laughs> I'll make this quick. A neighbor's brother-in-law managed the mall in Modesto and said, could you guys come and play at the mall? Wow. And for three, uh, in front of Carl, in front of J.C. Penney's, we learned seven songs. And we've been going ever since. We played, uh, those guys, I worked with them, Gary, he's, he was my neighbor for almost 30 years. And we never were a great man, a simple chord, simple songs, but it worked. Had to write the chords out, you know, and had to learn the chords because my little rhythm playing was very important in that band because we didn't have a lot of instrumentation. So my rhythm was important. Playing with you guys, I don't even need the guitar, but back then I had to have it. <laughs> well, I like it when you play the guitar. We have a little band that's called the Skyliners, named after the club that uh, Johnny Horton was leaving when he died and Hank Williams was going to uh, when he died. So an important little club. But, uh, you know, I bring back to the times of playing at uh, J.C. Penney's. The Mockers, I, the band I was in with John Clifton, our first gig was at a gas station opening. <laughs> And I think one time there was two dogs fighting at a mud puddle, and we played for that, too. <laughs> Back then, you'd go out and play anything, you know? It yeah, was great, yeah. you know? And, if you uh, could get an audience, you'd play, you man, know? Man, you know, it was yep. getting a gig. Uh, those first gigs, I mean, that's that sets up the tone for everything that you do. Yeah. And it's hard to do. Well, it's I'll tell you what happened. We were practicing for this J.C. Penney's job, mm -hmm. and we'd, we'd actually learned more than, more than seven songs. While we're practicing, my cousin is going to get married. And it was, the wedding was going to be our least reception at the 509. And he called me up and said, hey, Mel, I hear you're playing music. You know, I thought, oh, yeah, you know, sort of. So he hired us. So now we had to learn more songs. Out of that, out of that wedding, we got four weddings. Well, that was, in, that was the start right there. Yeah? Yeah, that was the start. Before I was in the Mockers, I was in a band with Vince Warner. And uh, we played at all the Elks and Moose Lines. Yeah. Yeah. Those were uh, those were good gigs. Yes, they you know? were. I don't even know if those are still around much. The Moose anymore. has moved over to the old Palm Lakes Golf Course, okay. and uh, they lost their place over on Chestnut. Right. And the Elks, of course, moved over there off of uh, uh, Barstow there in Blackstone, and I understand that that's kind of changed now. So they're not what they were. The younger people aren't into that sort of thing no. anymore, it don't no. seem like. I played the Moose an awful lot. We were there a lot, yeah. yeah. Great gig, nice folks. Yeah, yeah. Good challenge. You know what was interesting about it? We started out playing there. I won't say what year it was. I can't remember playing 9 to 12. Uh -huh. As the people increased in age, the hours dropped. And then yeah. they go from, not, from uh, no, 9 to 1, then 8 to 12, then 7 to 11, then, then 6 to 10, then it went away. I think we were playing there in <laughs> 77, 78, 79. Yeah. yeah. Those Jerry were, Cardoza was the big guns from Hampton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Those were uh, those were like real fond memories of those gigs. James Hawley played over there. Oh yeah, and uh, you know we were lucky to be part of that. Yeah, know? and you know Fresno was a different place back then. The Tower District was really arty and mm -hmm. uh, not particularly a wholesome atmosphere sometimes at night, but you know not dangerous yeah, or anything. Yeah, yeah. And then down where you know Fresno State was, where all the hip people were yeah you know and then it's kind of all shifted now and i think the art is maybe moving a little bit towards the mural district a little bit and we're getting a little bit more commercialized here in the tower but i like money yeah i have bills no honest man can pay so i better uh, better make some so well you know what you know what really what really worked for me when i retired because i didn't have any health insurance was the rest homes. Yes. God almighty. I mean, I started playing one or two a day practically. I was at two today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know, those are the nicest folks. Oh, yeah. I played over at Cottonwood uh, Court, uh, the memory care uh -huh. area. They were so appreciative. It was such a beautiful gig. Oh, yeah. You're the nicest, yeah. nicest folks no, in the world. It's great. It's great. I did yeah. that song Saddle Tramp there one time, and it says, maybe I'll wind up in Idaho. An elderly gentleman came up afterwards and said, I grew up in Idaho. And then the guy who was running the place came over and said, he had, didn't remember any of that for years. Yeah, and, you know. Yeah. So song, music is great therapy. You know, I'll tell you one time. This was this was a tearjerker. I was playing that song, which I'm. You're the only person that does songs that nobody else does, and Roger would do it. And I'll say, Oh yeah, I remember that one. 
Now hold down. The one by Jim Reeves. Oh, gosh. And I started singing that song, and this lady wasn't just crying. She was sobbing. She had a horse named Dan. I yeah. do that a little too often. Sometimes make people cry. Oh I man, I hit the wrong song. You yeah. know, but yeah, we scared some folks over in Fig Garden the other day. So we're going to take a little break, and we're going to come back with some music from Cousin Mel. We'll be right back after this word from Organic Pastures. <laughs> Pasture grazed, delicious, nutrient dense, 100% organic raw milk from Organic Pastures. Visit organicpastures.com or call 1 877 Raw Milk. I was an addict, an opiate addict. The three years clean in October. I was renewed at the Fresno Rescue Mission. My mom, who does a lot of cooking, has been part of the rescue mission, has been willing to help teach people to make jams and jellies and other food. The Fresno Rescue Mission. And I believe that downtown Fresno needs a renewal as well. Tree of Life Cafe represents new, healthy growth in downtown Fresno. I've seen men and women go through rehab programs. They want to start a new life. And yet when they get out on the street, they find it very difficult to get a job. Nobody will give them a chance. That's what this cafe is designed to do. You will be like family to us. We will serve you our home-cooked food made with farm-fresh produce that comes from farmers right here in our valley. We, we love, love downtown Fresno. Fresno. Sunshine Natural Health in Tulare, California is your source for nature's best remedies. Call Sunshine Natural Health at 559-688-2063 and get healthy. If you're considering a reverse mortgage in the Central Valley or just want more information, contact Jerry Carmichael. She's experienced, and more important, she's local. Call 559-903-6903. Call Brian Cossack today at 559-977-1976. Protecting you and those you love financially. Make an appointment today. At Miracle Realty, we've been providing premier professional residential sales and property management in residential and commercial property for years. We manage single-family homes, condominiums, apartment buildings, commercial buildings, office space, and much more. No matter what experience level you have in property management, Miracle Realty strives to make your experience as stress-free as possible. Serving Madera and the surrounding areas, we use the latest technology and provide top-notch service. We're a trusted and reliable name in residential sales and property management with the experience to answer any questions or complications that might come up. Give us a call today or visit us online for more information. Central Valley Talk .com. Well, glad that you hung around. How could you not? Cousin Mel's here. Anyway, Cousin Mel has had a long day today. So have I. We, we've been playing out at the cherry auction. We've been doing uh, elderly care places. So we've done a lot of singing already, and it's 6 o'clock. What time did you get up? About 4? I don't even remember. Yeah, the sun <laughs> wasn't up. Early. I know that. <laughs> and we've been playing and singing and having a good time. So Cousin Mel's a little hoarse today. <laughs> Just a uh, bit. <laughs> uh, so, but he's the real deal, and he don't stop. So we're going to go ahead and do a miles and miles of Texas for you. Ready? Yep. Right. I was born in Louisiana, down on that old bayou, raised on shrimp and catfish and mama's sweet gumbo. I got that rambling fever, said goodbye to Ma and Paul. I crossed that old Red River, and here's what I saw. That's right. Well, I saw miles and miles of Texas. All the stars up in the sky Well, I saw miles and miles of Texas Gonna live here till I die I rolled up into Austin, the cradle of the West Just ask any cowboy, he'll tell you it's the best I met a blue-eyed cutie, got friendly with her paw I looked into her big blue eyes and guess what I saw? That's right. Well, I saw miles and miles of Texas. All the stars up in the sky. Well, I saw miles and miles of Texas. 
gonna live here till I die. Mr. Dennis, play that fiddle, yeah. I started riding Broncos in every rodeo. I met up with a tough one, they call him the Devil Joe. I threw the reins around him, climbed up on that old outlaw. And when he threw me from the saddle, here's what I saw. That's right. Yeah, I saw miles and miles of Texas. All the stars up in the sky. Yeah, I saw miles and miles of Texas Gonna live here till I die Yes, I'm gonna live here till I die Woo, miles and miles of Texas, all right. You know any truck driving songs? Well, uh, let's just say I know one that I knew, know the words to. The rest of them I'm going to have to make the words up. So It really is the king of the truck driving song. You it? know, it is. I, I think Dave Dudley uh, was, well, the Red Soul Mine one, though, the yeah. one that, where the guy topped the hill and cut the wheel and went over oh. the cliff. I mean, that's the real deal there. Big Joe and Phantom 309, oh, my God. Yeah, I mean, he walked into the restaurant, and they said every now and then some guy like you comes yeah. in, let me tell you what happened a few years back. Yeah. That's Same story. I love that song. Same story as Large Marge in the Pee Wee Herman movie. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's corny, but yeah. it's it's good. You know? Oh, it 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 sends shivers up my spine. <laughs> Tom Waits covered that song. You don't get no cooler when when Tom Waits, one of the greatest songwriters in the world, covers your song. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But Dave Dudley, you know, he was the first guy to record a Chris Christopherson song, the Vietnam Blues. Oh my gosh. Uh, has a great line, Ho Chi Who. <laughs> <laughs> Ho Chi Minh, people's leader, you know, and uh, oh a great, God. great song. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chris did a 180 on his politics, but that was, was his first song. <clears throat> and so Dave Dudley's an important figure, you know, great singer. He did a lot of stuff, and he was very versatile. Yeah. So, Six Days on the Road yeah. in G. All right. Go ahead. Well, I pulled out of Pittsburgh, rolling up that eastern seaboard. I got my diesel wound up, and she's running like a never before. Well, I don't see a cop in sight. I can dog those skills all right. Six days on the road, and I'm gonna make it home tonight. I got me ten Ford Speeds and a Georgia Overdrive. White pills and my eyes are open wide. Well, nothing bothers me tonight. I don't see a cop in sight. Six days on the road and I'm gonna, gonna make it home tonight. I'll play that fiddle, Dennis. Yeah. Like a month since I kissed my baby goodnight. Right. Well, I could have them women, but I'm not like most of those guys. Well, I could find one to hold me tight, but I never make my limits all right. Six days on the road, and I'm gonna, gonna make, make it home tonight. tonight. Six days on the road, and I'm gonna, gonna, gonna make it home tonight. tonight. One more time. Six days on the road, and we're gonna make it home tonight. (laughs) 
So, Hank's your favorite, Hank, Hank Williams Sr.? One of them? Boy, I got to tell you. I mean, I like to do his songs. I, uh, I, I thought he was great, you know? You know, when I think about it, and I've studied it my whole life. I'm 53 years old, and I've been really into it, and I've listened to it all. I know a lot of songs in that. I think the greatest, and it's, you can put him in any order you want, yeah. greatest country uh, artist, Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, Marty Robbins, uh, Hank Williams Sr., and George Jones. Yeah. I mean, there's some that, you know, they might get left out a little bit, and there's the other ones, but those are the five greatest, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. you know, tonight when I was coming over here, I ran in the house real quick to get a CD because I don't want to listen to the radio, and I grabbed a Merle Haggard CD. And I put that thing in, Roger. The first ten songs, I sing every one of them. Yeah. Every single one of them. Yeah. Well, <laughs> now I surprised the heck out of me. You know, a couple. What is it? About a week, two, a week and a half ago, when he died, they did an all-day tribute, and there were so many great songs, and it covered every hurt and bad feeling I ever had, every happy feeling I ever yeah. had. He sang about it all. Yeah, know? he did. Yeah. And, you know, great songwriter. Do you got a Merle or a Hank song you want to do? Well, you, we talked about doing Jambalaya, but Let's I'd really do rather do a, a Merle Haggard song. Let's do but it. Does it matter? Yeah, you tell me. Okay, well, this is kind of a slow song. I hope right. it's okay. It's called Fun. The Farmer's Daughter. Let's do it. All right. I'm not sure how well this is going to come out, but I'd sure <laughs> like to do it. I just love this song. I think it's a great story, and Lord help me get the words right. Tonight, there will be candle lights. And roses in this little one room chapel that's almost fallen down. There will be tears in this old farmer's eyes this evening when he gives his one possession. To the city boy town. His hair's a little longer than we're used to. But I guess I should find something good to say about the man who loves the farmer's daughter. And soon will become my son in law today. Mama left eight years ago, December, and it's hard to be a dad and mama too. But somehow we made a home. Of this old farmhouse And love's the only thing My baby's new Why, he could be the richest man Seven counties And not be good Enough to take her hand For I know he really loves the farmer's daughter. And yes, the farmer's daughter loves the man. Great song. Yeah, I heard that on that tribute, and I hadn't heard that song in a while. Yeah. Probably Beautiful song. Not a good one for me to pick with no voice, but I wanted to do it so bad. I wanted to do something about Merle Haggard. There was one that reminded me of the movie Payday with Rip Torn, if you've ever never seen <laughs> it. I talk about it all the time. You should see it. The greatest country music. Well, that and Walk Hard are the greatest country music movies of all time. Uh, but there's a song that Merle did about how he knew the mom wasn't going to show up for the little girl's birthday, so he sent a present and saying it was from the mom. Oh, man, talk about a tearjerker. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, no, Let's do a Hank song. Then we'll right, go to commercial. Uh, can you see? Yeah. Mind if it's a slow one? Do it, whatever you want. I'm going to do a medley. I'm going to do two together. And uh, 
and I hope it goes okay. Can you see? Today I passed you on the street And my heart fell at your feet I can't help it if I'm still in love with you Another man stood by your side And he looked so satisfied I can't help it if I'm still in love with you It's so hard to know Someone else's arms could hold you And love you just the way I used to do Well, heaven only knows how much I miss you I can't help it If I'm still in love with you A little change here now There was a time That I believed That you were my every dream But now my poor heart's Clinging to some old time memory Why do you run And hide from life You know it's just not smart Why can't I free Your doubtful mind And melt your cold, cold heart yeah. <laughs> Let's hear it for Cousin Mel All Thanks right. for being here Thank you Thank you, Roger. Come back and again Dennis, soon. Thank you very much. Here's a message from our friends at Javita. Rethink your drink with independent Javita member Christine Levin. Call 559 301 5177 and get healthy and wealthy. Email Michelle Bradford at LondonProperties.com or call 559 907 9738 to get your dream home today. Need raisins? Call National Raisin Company at 559-834-5981 or online at nationalraisin.com. I think people think of raw food or healthy food as not having much flavor, and this is so flavorful. So very nutrient-dense, and it feeds my body. I love raw Fresno because I learned so much about nutrition. It's organic, and it's, it's delicious. It's nutrient-dense um, and very tasty. So that's alive, probiotics, and healthy vegetables to get that protein, uh, and it's a game-changer. It's awesome. I come to Raw Fresno just because I love the food. There's not too many options or any options like this anywhere. I come back because the food is delicious. It's definitely a new experience, you know, the different tastes, the salad. It's absolutely delicious. I love the food because, as I found, uh, this food actually has a lot of flavor. It's all so good, it's even, it's hard for me to decide what to eat, so then I'll just take samples of everything. Uh, my husband and I both are addicted to it, and it's like we go through uh, kale withdrawals because it makes us feel better. It's so healthy and because it tastes so good. I love the wraps, I love the chocolate cheese cake and I know everything in it is good for me and I can eat it and feel good about myself. The food is so healthy and very tasty. I would definitely come back to raw fresno. I'm not even the same person and it's all to this food. It's just amazing. It's transforming. Central Valley Talk. Wow. Cousin Mel, let's hear it one more time yeah. for him. That's the real deal there. Cousin Mel isn't old school. He's the school that burned down before they built the old school, and that's the kind of stuff I like. So, you know, and one of my favorite folks. Anyway, we're going to talk about something here, and, you know, some people find this a touchy subject. But this, this is Central Valley Talk, and we're going to talk something about what's going on in Central Valley. In our tower district here, and our 
little area within here, two of the three places that offered like art music, artistic music, have either gone or are going. There's only going to be one left. I'm not going to name any of them. You know who they are. So a lot of the places that do have music around here that do employ me, you have to play a certain type of music there to entertain the crowd. You were not there to depress people or impress people. You were there to entertain the people. And that's well and good. That's something I can do when I choose to. So it doesn't, this doesn't really affect me and my making a living so much. What it affects me as a music listener. You know, I remember a place right down the street from where I'm sitting used to have only folk music on the weekends. And people would come over for, uh, uh, from all over the, the, the state to play there. And uh, I remember we used to have a little art museum downtown where I brought John Renborn to play, where Preston Reed played there. And a lot of those things seem to be disappearing now. And we're going to more commercialized music, which is fine, because people get paid for it, and people enjoy it, and people make money. I like money. Money's good. But I also like art. And uh, I hear that there's a place in Visalia called the Maverick coffee coffee roaster or something like that i haven't heard much about it but they every weekend they have cowboy music mm. now that's kind of cool now i'm sure there's a lot of cowboys out there but everybody loves cowboy music uh i have a cowboy hat but i am not a cowboy i'm i'm a guitar player you know but I'm going to do some cowboy songs, and these are all three from the same album. These are three songs from Gunfighter Ballads and Trail Songs. came out in 1959 by Marty Robbins. One of them is more than one of the more popular songs off of it, and we'll save that for last. But this is one of the, the first two are some songs that kind of got you know, forgotten a little bit, and they're great songs. This one was written by Marty himself. I was but a young man, I was wild and full of fire, a youth within my teens, filled with challenge and desires. I ran away from home, I left my mother and my dad, I know it grieved them so, to learn their only boy was bad. I fell in with an outlaw gang, their names were known quite well. How many times we robbed and plundered, I can never tell. This kind of sinful living leads only to a fall. I learned this much and more the night I heard my master call. One night we wrestled cattle, a thousand head or so, and then started them out on a trail that leads to Mexico. But a northern started blowing, lightning flashed about. I thought someone was calling me, I thought I heard a shout. Then at that moment, lightning struck not 20 yards from me. And left there was a giant cross where once there was a tree. And this time I knew I heard a voice, a voice so sweet and strange. A voice that came from everywhere, a voice that called my name. I was frightened, I was thinking of all the sinful deeds I'd done. I failed to see a thousand head of cattle start to run. The cattle they stampeded and they went running all around. My pony ran and stumbled and it threw me to the ground. And I could see the end was nearing Death would be the price When a mighty bolt of lightning Showed the face of Jesus Christ And I cried, oh Lord, forgive me Don't let this happen now I want to live for you alone Oh God, these words I vow My wicked past unfolded I have thought of wasted years When another bolt of lightning Killed a hundred head of steers And then the others rushed on by me And I was left to live 
The master has his reasons and life is his to take or give. A miracle performed that night, I wasn't meant to die. The dead ones formed a barricade, at least six or seven high. There alone I stood, alone but safe and sound. And I cried and begged for mercy as I knelt upon the ground. Now a pardon I have been granted, my sinful soul set free. No more to fear the angry waves upon life's stormy seas. Saved by the love of God, a love that will remain. I gave my heart and soul the night the Savior called my name. How did he write that? Guy was just a genius, you know. I mean, uh, I, I've sang that song a thousand times, you know. I put that on my very first uh, cassette tape that I used to sell at the craft fairs. And every time I saw an elderly gentleman in a cowboy hat, I'd sing that and I'd sell a tape. I owe Marty Robbins a lot of money. And, uh, but, I, I, like I said, I've sang that song a thousand times and it still gets me every single time. It's just a great song. And Marty Robbins. Now this next song was written by Tom Paul Glaser. And a lot of people don't know that the Glaser brothers from Napa Valley were the guys who were singing the harmonies on the original uh, trail ballads. It wasn't the guy that uh, sang live with uh, Marty. It was the Glaser brothers, Chuck, Jim, and Tom Paul. And that's Grady Martin on the guitar on that stuff. Man, that's guitar playing. And a lot of that stuff is Marty on the acoustic guitar, the Glaser brothers. Uh, sometimes Tom Paul or Jim would play a little guitar. And then Grady Martin played leads, and there was a bass player. I forget the bass player's name right now. I'm sorry. I'm getting old. But anyway, uh, this next song is written by Tom Paul for that album. I pulled out of Kansas City, going south to Mexico. I was running and dodging danger, left the girl that I love so. Far behind in Kansas City with a past that I had earned. Twenty notches on a six-gun marked the lessons that I'd learned. Many times I'd thrown my fast gun for a place to lay my head. Now the nights begin to haunt me with the men that I left in. I couldn't take it any longer, this life that I'd begun. So I said goodbye to Jeannie, I became a running gun. Well, I pulled into Amarillo as the sun sank in the west. My thoughts in Kansas City with a girl that I love best. How she smiled and kissed me gently as I turned away to go. Said I'd send for her to meet me once I'd reached old Mexico. I had barely left the saddle and my boot just touched the ground. When a cold voice from the shadows told me not to turn around. That he knew about my fast gun, knew the price paid by the law. Challenged by a bounty hunter, I turned around to the draw. Well, I knew someday I'd meet him for his hand like lightning flashed. My own gun stood in leather as his bullet tore its path. And though my eyes are growing weaker, I can see him walk away. And I know that where I lie tonight, he too will lie someday. Well, a crowd is gathering round me and my eyes are growing dim. My thoughts return to Jeannie and the home that we had planned. Please tell her, won't you miss her? She's still the only one. But a woman's love is wasted when she loves a running gun. Yes, a woman's love is wasted when she loves a running gun. Running gun. Did you ever notice that song was from the point of view of a dead guy? Yeah. <laughs> kind of cool. 
Uh, I should make a whole album, Songs from the Point of View of the Dead, or something like that. It's a whole idea that just uh, caught me. Well, it's good that we have a few minutes left, because this is a very long song. And if we get cut off before we're done, uh, the bad guy gets killed at the end. So, uh... To the town of Alwafria rode a stranger one fine day. Hardly spoke to folks around him, he didn't have too much to say. And no one dared to ask his business, no one dared to make a slip. A stranger there among him wore a big iron on his hip, a big iron on his hip. It was early in the morning when he rode into the town He came riding from the south side, slowly looking all around Yes, he's an outlaw, loose and running, came a whisper from each lip And he's here to do his business with that big iron on his hip Big iron on his hip in this town there lived an outlaw by the name of Texas Red. Many men had tried to take him, and that many men were dead. Yes, he was vicious and a killer, though a youth of 24. And the notches on his six-gun numbered one in 19 more. One in 19 more. Well, the stranger, he started talking, he made it plain to folks around. He was an Arizona Ranger, he wouldn't be too long in town. And he was there to take an outlaw back alive or maybe dead. He said it didn't matter, he was after Texas Red, after Texas Red. It wasn't long before our story got relayed to Texas Red And he said he didn't worry, men who tried before were dead Yes, twenty men had tried to take him, twenty men had made their slip And twenty-one would be the ranger with the big iron on his hip The big iron on his hip Fresno State students, listen up. We're looking for a place to live. Try University Place. Call 559-229-2295 or visit FresnoUniversityPlace.com for more information. Need a dentist? Call Dr. David Wright at 559-222-6213 or visit BiteMeDental.com. 